Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this new episode of Tendo Video Feedback. So in this series of videos, um, basically I've got some fantastic, wonderful videos from you lovely, uh, well one of you lovely viewers uh, <laughs> out there. You sent me some, uh, I think the two Shi'i videos, uh, we're going to have a watch in a minute and I'm going to give you some feedback on hopefully how you can improve and do a little bit better next time. Um, before we jump into that though, a couple of things. First thing, most importantly, uh, with these videos, uh, even more important than shopping at Kendall Star, uh, is I don't want any nonsense uh, in the comments. You know, um, we never get them on these, to be fair, but, uh, you know, criticizing or anything like this, you know, this wonderful person's been uh, brave enough to send uh, this video for all of us to benefit from. Uh, so not, no nasty comments, nothing like that. I'll just delete it, all right? None of that sort of negativity. Um, if you think you can do better, you can send me a video and we'll have a look. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, um, don't forget all the YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe. And also, if you like these videos, if you like the other videos that I do, all the videos on this channel, of course, completely free of charge. Um, shop at kendostar.com. <laughs> That's my website that sells fantastic, amazing, brilliant Kendo equipment. Now, of course, I would say that, but you can check out how brilliant we're rated. Everyone in your dojo has got to be using Kendo Star by now. If not, what are they thinking? Like, Kendo Star is by far the best, everybody thinks so. No, yeah, I know I'd say that, I know I'd say that, but try it out. You'll agree. If you haven't already, I'm sure you already are, because you're not crazy, all right? So, shop with Kendo Star. <laughs> right, so here we've got uh, a couple of videos. We've got two to look at uh, today. I think it's the first round and the second round um, of... Uh, it's actually a Kumdo tournament. Uh, it's in the US, I believe. Um, Kumdo is the uh, Korean uh, pronunciation... Pronunci pronunciation? <laughs> what a funny word to not be able to pronounce. Pronunciation. Of, uh, <laughs> of Kendo. It's the same kanji, pretty much. Just pronounced differently in the different languages. Um... Because of that, they do follow slightly different pro protocols. I'm not going to get into that sort of thing. I've done a video about why it's why I think it's a bit like that in the past, um, ages ago, actually. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. For all intents and purposes, it's it's pretty much the same as Kendall um, for the for the at least in the context in which we're looking at it today. Um, I think the only procedural difference is that there's no song kill so don't be surprised if they're not doing song kill uh, but otherwise your crit criteria for Ippon uh, are the same um, and everything else is the same so uh, I understand that the um, person that sent this in is fourth I can't remember the Korean word but fourth Q same as fourth Q um, so it's like a Kyusha level tournament I expect uh, let's have a look and see how you got on our um, our uh, viewer here is in red in this first video. It's only a short one, so let's let's see how he got on. Okay, so first thing I'm going to say straight away is your left heel's too high, right? So get your left heel down a little bit. It needs to be, you know, you're like this far off the floor. It needs to be half that, all right? If it's too high like this, you can't launch yourself forward. You can only launch yourself sort of upwards and you're probably going to kick out your left leg a little bit. We might see that, we might not, but you're definitely not, not going to be able to drive forward for your fumikomi, all right? Now, you're going to have to forgive me. I don't know the Korean terms. I know that um, kumdo, a lot of kumdo uh, clubs use the Korean terminology instead of the Japanese one. I only know the Japanese one, so... Um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out what I mean. Good, good chance of men. Wait, so, see, you can see here how when you, you're trying to do this from your coming, you're not really launching into it. Yeah, it's just kind of a step with your right foot. Uh, this cold day is a good example. Um, 
this this cut here. Nice try for the the cut there, shut, like trying to feint for the men and then hitting down the cut there. But you are able to de deliver the strike that's got proper kentai no ichi, all right? So the sword, body, and spirit unified into a proper cut because you've not got a proper fumikomi. You're just sort of hitting at it, hitting out at it with your hands um, rather than having your actual body engaged in the kote strike. So it's not a decisive, impressive strike, even if it was on target. So you can't really get the ippon. And then also, you don't want to raise your hands like this after you hit kote. Um, this isn't the correct stanshin for kote. Uh, after kote, strike, and the shinai wants to go to the left here in case you need to strike again quickly um, or defend yourself. But you don't want to go this way, okay? Okay, nice attempt for Hiraza though. Uh, see how you're tying your men? This is this is not necessarily related directly to your technique, but you see how you've got your men tied here? You want to fix this too. Um, the level at which it's tied isn't too bad, um, but what you want to do is once you've got it tied, you see how you're, you're making this sort of tackle men style that it's like a cartoon octopus it's called. So. Grab the back of the men daddy here, the flaps here, and I want you to pull them forward like that so you get a nice proper shape, yeah? Um, rather than this kind of bam, bam sort of shape. The men's not gonna protect you properly. It doesn't look super cool either. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's something else I want you to do. Uh, it's not, a, it's not before someone says, it's not a stylistic Japanese Korean thing, right? I know someone's gonna say that for some reason. It's not. Um, the best players in Korea don't wear their men like that, right? Not the ones I know anyway. Those good men? Good men? So this is your men because you, uh, obviously, you made the strike first, but that's not necessarily why it's uh, a brilliant Ippon. Um, you, you initiated this sequence. Uh, your opponent was attacking in response to you. So this is good. Um, you'll improve it next time in that uh, you're not really engaging your left hand with your strike. That's why after your strike, your left elbow is fully bent, okay? So your, your, your elbow isn't extended into your strike to get a good pop, good tenuji. Um, so you'll make better quality strikes if you can learn to just outstretch that little bit more with your left, left arm. And you see how after you strike, you've got this sort of shape when it wants to be this sort of shape. Again, we've got that issue with the kote there. So he, these strikes as well. These, this. And I know you're stamping on the floor, but it's not fumikomi, all right? Fumikomi is not just stamping on the floor, it's launching into the attack. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to go really far forward. Sometimes distance doesn't allow that, but it's not just stepping out with your right foot either, or just having your right foot do the work. Even if you're on the spot, your hips are still engaged in your fumikomi, pam. Yeah, still, even if it's like a couple of millimeters or centimeters, your hips actually come forward a little bit as you make that strike. Yeah, that isn't what's happening with you. You're just sort of banging your right foot on the floor. It's not the same thing. And it's related to that left heel being off the ground. Too high. <laughs> Good. That's it. Good. Good control of CI Joe there, moving away from the line. Don't want to step out. Um, be careful here as well. I don't want to give you too much to go at. Uh, I realise you're like at fourth Q level, so too too much isn't necessarily a good thing. But you don't ever really want to have your left hand this high. I know it might just be a momentary thing, but you, you don't want your left hand this high. Um, you, you know, you can't really do a lot from there. It's a, it's a uh, you can't attack properly. Uh, you can't defend properly. Um, you need to have that left hand locked down that little bit lower. Good. Same idea there. With that timing for the men. Yeah, that was good. Withdraw, step in, men. Good. Very, very good men. But your, so your dancing's a bit short. So the problem you've got here is, as you start to improve, 
you might make a strike that, like this, the flags will go up and then they'll come back down again or the point will get taken away because you've kind of given up on the waza before it's complete. Um, you need to kind of claim the the Ippon, uh, which isn't happening here. You make the strike, good, but you finished it here when actually the strike's not complete yet, all right? And then you even start to go for the next one, even though the flags are up and the game's over, all right? You don't, you know, there's a, this isn't necessarily a problem at a lower level like this, but as you start to go up uh, and increase in ability, um, the Shimpan are gonna get stricter on that sort of thing, okay? I probably, mm, yeah, I probably tie the hip more, maybe a centimeter or two higher, and you definitely need, it doesn't want to be against your neck here. It needs to be, you need, to, you need to pull it, pull it forward like that. Make a big, big difference. Okay, so here's the next match. Um, I understand uh, that in this one we're sort of already a third or so into the match, and um, you are already at one one. I think you said in the message. This time you're in white and you're facing the camera, so let's have a look. So yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick with this. this. This left hand is just that little bit too high and it's very dark, you can't really see, but I can see from the position of your shinai, your, your entire shinai is too high. You're not gonna be able to effectively control the center like that. And essentially, I can see from these strikes that you're making here that your right hand is doing probably 90% of the work of swinging the shin ice right now. Um, so even if these strikes connect, you're probably going to struggle to get point unless they're at a brilliant uh, opportunity like the men's were from your uh, last, last chi. Again, I don't want to pick on you too much. I know there's a lot here, but uh, you see this part here. This is a good thing. And it might, you know, I, I think this is something for a lot of people to take away from. And this is coming from that left heel being too high. You don't have the proper tension in your left calf. So when you try to move forward to close the distance here, it's very slow. You see um, here, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It has to be sa, sa, this way. And you can't be bobbing this way like this. Yeah, pam, pam, this way. It's just not threatening um, and you're not able to react. See how you're like this? It has to be sa, sa, this way. Feet have to be one, not one, two, one, two, okay? I know, I know I'm throwing a lot at you now. Yeah. So then, I think I think probably this will be the last thing I'm going to say is it, it, there's probably a lack of commitment to your strikes here too. Um, so this is why they sort of all sort of end in sort of half-hearted or halfway through. Oh, that was good, man. That was good, man. Not sure if it connected or not, but pretty good. Again, just probably not crisp enough, you know. Like that for me, call me. Like that good tenuity. Good. Pretty good so far, guys. Oh, yeah, controlling the match pretty well. But again, you see there, see there, had a good chance of men, because you lack that commitment, you lack the the proper like ability to to see how slow your left foot came up, and then it sort of died after that. So it wasn't, you know, you, you did the humigomi, your left foot sort of slowly came up and was flat on the floor, so it wasn't able to keep you sort of launching forward, you didn't have enough momentum and you didn't have enough commitment to the strike. Otherwise, I think that would have been Ippon. But you fell short, you know, and, and again, because your right hand swing. So all of these things I've, I've sort of pointed out as again, I know I've said it a lot, uh, a lot of things, but these things, your left heel not giving you enough 
power to launch. Your uh, strike's not having enough commitment. Your left heel, uh, left foot being too slow coming up, and your left arm not properly extending, and your right hand doing too much work have all cost you this Ippon. If all of those things had been sort of a bit, a little bit better, uh, and I'm not saying perfect, but a little bit better, you'd have probably connected with that men. And if there'd have been more commitment to the strike, you'd have probably been get, get, uh, given a point. So you see how there's a that's a good good example of the the lack of commitment to the strike I'm talking about here. Man, man, yeah, it's not quite right, is it? You know what I mean? It's uh, man. Next one. Okay, now I can look for the next one. Yeah, not man. This way, it's not quite enough commitment to the strike. Hard though, it's, it's hard. Okay, something has to happen now. Okay, I appreciate the effort of your men, Kais Kode, but uh, let's put that Waza to one side for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I like how you're trying lots of different techniques though. I think I think it's good that you you know um I, when I say that, I mean I don't necessarily mean like men kai I mean like the, you, you're looking for different ways to hit his men or different ways to hit his kote rather than just repeating the same pattern over over. Um that's that's a very good thing, definitely. So keep that up. You wanna be careful here, you see how you step in, you raise your hands like that, someone that's good's gonna nip your kote right away. But you know what I'm going to say about that men's strike as well there, yeah? You had a good chance, you got a good chance. But just like the other one, those other things have been together, you'd have, you'd have had the good shot men there. Okay. So what happens when you run out of time? Is it Hante? No, okay, Encho. Is it not? Encho. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> what happens here? Let's skip ahead because we can't tell what's going on. Oh, so it's it's Hante, is it? Is it Hante? Or did he already have a point? Okay. Uh I don't know how that quite ended because I, th I thought you said in the message it was 1-1 unless it was 1-0. Um, but either way, um, good match. Uh, two good matches, actually. Uh, fantastic men's strikes in your first match. Really great opportunities for men's strikes in the second match, but you just weren't quite enough uh, to actually achieve the Ippon in them. Uh, so take away what I said. Left heel down, left hand down. Um, Try to focus on swinging with the left hand. Launch yourself forward from your left foot with your fumikomi. Bring up your left uh, foot very quickly um, and commit to those strikes. And you're definitely going to see yourself achieving more Ippon. I'm absolutely sure of it. Thank you very much for sending the video. Uh, if anyone else has a video you'd like me to um, have a look at on these, uh, this series, um, send it to me at mail at kendostar.com. What I want you to do, I want you to put it on YouTube and I want you to make it unlisted um, and send me the link. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's it. Thank you for joining me. Shop at Kendo Star. See you next time. Bye-bye.